Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews Now 2, and today we're going to be taking a look at a PC port picker list for one of our viewers. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be doing a PC part picker list for one of our viewers who has uh, reached out and contacted us at Mike at Mike'sUnboxing.com and asked for my opinions or some information on what he could do for a build around about the £700 mark. Now, he does already have some bits and pieces already. He's got a case, power supply, and some storage. So all we're looking at today is realistically the motherboard, processor, cooling equipment, and a GPU. Maybe a few other bits and pieces as well. But we've got a ton of money, or at least it seems like a ton of money. But what can we actually get for it? Now, Jim's actually reached out and asked these questions. I also emailed back and say, what are you actually using the PC for? What bits have you got already? So we've got a Game Max View case, which is a really nice case, which we reviewed a while back, which uh, you can check out up here. Also, he's got a Corsair power supply, 650 watt semi-modular. So that's a really nice power supply to start with. And also he's got his own storage, which he hasn't gone into detail with. So we'll kind of leave it as that, but storage is taken care of. Other than that, we're pretty much open to suggestions. Now his games are uh, driving games mostly, dirt, those kinds of things. Formula One 2020 was one which was specifically mentioned. And also he has a monitor already, and the monitor he's using is a 32-inch ASUS, which is, seems to be a 1080p panel. So we don't really need to be pushing it that hard. We don't need a particularly expensive graphics card. 1080p gaming is relatively easy to do. But we want a card which will maybe push to 1440p, or maybe even 4K at a later date. Now again, at the moment, it's a really difficult thing to do. It is now currently kind of beginning of September 2020. And we're right on the cusp of some major, major product releases in the fall. We've got NVIDIA, who have just announced the 3000 series, which we're waiting for them to be released. Not seen reviews yet, so we don't know for sure if it's going to live up to the hype. Also, AMD have also announced that they're going to be releasing in October their 4000 series processors and also the 6000 series graphics cards, or Big Navi. So realistically, at the moment, it is actually a particularly bad time to buy. Well, unless you're buying an NVIDIA graphics card because those things are falling at a ridiculous rate. So NVIDIA cards, second hand, if you can get one, pick one up. They are going for crazy money. But for everything else at the moment, RAM prices are coming down, CPU prices are going up. It's, uh, it's a bit of a treacherous marketplace. And realistically, my ultimate advice is don't buy anything yet. Wait. Wait maybe a month, month and a half, and see what is coming out from AMD. But with that said, I did say I'll do a PC part picker list. So that's what I've done. So let's go to PC part picker and we'll take a look and see what my recommendations are. So this is the saved list. I'll put a link to this in the video description so you can check it out for yourselves. If you want to make any comments, feel free to do so. I'm sure Jim will appreciate it. So first of all, I've gone with basically things that I know and value for money. Now we've got a relatively good budget, 700 to 800 pounds for a gaming PC. It's actually pretty fantastic. But once you start spending the money on those individual components, it does mount up very, very quickly. Now, I think this particular setup is coming up to around about the 750, 770 pounds mark. So we've got a little bit of flexibility in various directions, but this is certainly where I'd be looking. So to begin with, we've gone with the old favorite, which is the Ryzen 5 3600. Now again, we don't know what is gonna be coming out from AMD very, very shortly. So this is a safe bet. At the moment, prices are starting to rise slightly for this particular model and we've seen almost a 10 to 20 pounds increase over the last week alone. So again, it isn't a great time to buy, but if you are gonna buy and you're looking at gaming, this does offer a lot of value for money. I was gonna suggest the 3700X, but for me at almost double the price here in the UK, for the limited extra, maybe 200 megahertz and also the extra cores, I don't realistically think it's worth it, especially now, and not knowing what is coming out in a month's time. So the 3600, Create your own processor. I use one personally in my own gaming stroke video editing rig, and it does really, really well. Fantastic value for money. And there's nothing that Intel have got which can even come close to touching it for this price performance. So definitely AMD system with the Ryzen 5 3600 currently, as things stand, would be my recommendation. Now the cooler that comes with the 3600 is basically CAC. It works, it does the job, but unless you've got an extremely high airflow case, which actually the view is pretty good on airflow, but even still, it does need a little bit of help with that cooler. So I've suggested, being that it is a Game Max case, then we're gonna use the Game Max Gamma 500 ARGB CPU cooler. If I click on this now, you can see what it looks like. It's an RGB cooler and it'll fit in really nice with the whole overall aesthetic of that particular case. Obviously, it is a relatively cost-effective 
uh, cooler as well. £23 here in the UK at the moment from Amazon.co.uk. We'll put links for all this stuff in the video description so you can check it all out for yourselves as well. Other notable mentions, obviously, would be the Arctic Freezer 34. A little bit more expensive, around about 30 to £35, pounds, depending on where you shop. Bit of a better performer, a little bit quieter as well. Certainly highly recommended. For my own personal rig, uh, because I do like to have a little bit of silence in the uh, GameAx F15 case that I've got, the NHU12S is a fantastic cooler. It is a lot more expensive. These, realistically, you're going to be looking £40 upwards at a very minimum, but not sure fans are amazing. There's no two ways about it. They are exceptionally quiet and they do work exceptionally well. And temperatures are kept well, well in check. Not saying that the Arctic Freezer 34 is a bad cooler, by no means, it is a fantastic cooler. Just, obviously, the Noctua is a slight level above, but you do pay for that performance. So that's our processor and cooler kind of taken care of. Obviously, stock cooler, you can use it if you want to. You can save yourself 30, 40 pounds on your build price and maybe prioritize something else and maybe get a cooler a little bit later on down the road. The stock cooler will work. It's just not great and it is a little bit on the noisy side. So the next thing is, what do we put this on? motherboard now this is going to be a bone of contention for a lot of people i can already hear you out there screaming b450 tomahawk b450 tomahawk no please do not buy that at the moment especially with the 4000 series processors coming out we do not know what bios updates are going to be coming out for the tomahawk although amd promised that they will allow updates it's down to msi and their engineers to actually make efficient bios updates that work with the tomahawk board all kinds of beta bioses etc etc so yeah, it's got good VRMs, but there's better on the market and also for better pricing. So you could go with the actual modern Tomahawk, the B550, or even the X570 Tomahawks if you wanted to. They do carry quite a price premium. So my personal suggestion would be to go with the B550-A Pro from MSI, which is essentially a slightly cut down version of the Tomahawk. It does retain pretty much most of the features and is an exceptionally good board and tested very well. If you go over to Hub, you can check out their review up here, and it does do exceptionally well in the mid-range. Also, very, very good for support for the 4000 series processor was coming out. Essentially, that is what the B550 chipset was kind of aimed at, really. Also, you've got really good VRMs, VRM coolers, and you've got lots of options for adding NVMe drives, plenty of SATA ports, all those kind of usual things, loads of fan headers, which in that case, although there is a hub in the case, it is always nice to have extra fan headers available. And this board at the moment in the UK retails for around about £130 mark, which I think is actually fantastic value for money for B550 chipset motherboard. So next up is going to be RAM. Now RAM at the moment, prices are plummeting. They are really are dropping. So either the new Ryzen 4000 series is going to need some very high clocked memory, which is pretty likely. So we're possibly looking at 4000 or higher being the sweet spot, maybe 4400. So I think a lot of DRAM manufacturers are trying to clear out existing stocks of the DDR3200, 3400, 3600, etc, etc. So we are seeing prices plummet. Now I've gone for a 32 gig set of Corsair Vengeance LPX, primarily because it is super, super stable, very standard and pretty much works with everything. Very likely that it will work on almost every setup straight away without any real tweaking. Now at the moment, this in the UK for 32 gigabytes which is pretty insane, is under £130. So obviously you could save a considerable amount of money, just go with 16 gigs and you can basically half that price. So you run about £65, £70, which for DDR4-3600, it is slightly higher latency. It's CL18 rather than CL16, which would have been nice. But chances are, because it's Vengeance RAM, you can probably tweak it a little bit and tighten those timings up a little bit and not have to pay a privilege for it. Now next up is the graphics card. Now the graphics card was a difficult one for me. I was very torn on this, I've got to be honest with you, especially because of what's going on in the graphics card market at the moment, it is an exceptionally difficult decision to make. Now personally, very, very recently, I bought the uh, EVGA GeForce RTX 2060 KO edition. That was because it was reduced quite heavily down to about 260, 270 pounds. But at the moment it's back up to the 300 pounds mark. So it makes no sense going for the non ultra version when there is an ultra version available. So at the moment there is the EVGA GeForce RTX 2060 6 GB KO Ultra Gaming video card just sneaking under £310 at the moment here in the UK, which again is, for me, fantastic value for money. I don't know whether Jim's going to do some streaming, um, 
potentially he could do, or maybe do some recording of gameplay, etc. I'm not entirely sure, but at least with that card, it does give you a bit of flexibility. You've also got the things like the NVIDIA Studio coming out, which is likely to be compatible. So it is a very good card and does amazingly well at 1080p, even 1440p, it still can keep up with them. Again, I'm not entirely sure what the monitor supports. It's a 32 inch ASUS 1080p, so I'm presuming it's gonna be some kind of free sync monitor, so probably around about 75 hertz, which for that particular card is gonna be absolutely fine. And if Jim decides to upgrade his monitor to a 1440p or even a 4K, it's still gonna work with it. Although ideally, again, we pretty much wanna wait until the Nvidia cards come out, the new ones come out, and also the new big Navi cards to see how they perform and what prices they're gonna be. It is a really, really difficult time to actually put your hand on your heart and say, yes, this is a good purchase because we don't know. It is really close to that kind of D-Day where all these new things come out and the whole game changes completely, or at least we hope it does. So moving down through the list, you've got the Game Max View ATX case, which I've put a zero by because that's kind of paid for already. We've got the Corsair TXM Gold, uh, 650 Gold Certified Semi-Modular Power Supply. Amazing power supply, absolutely brilliant. And I've also put in, he did mention in the email, maybe adding some fans. I'm not too sure how many he's got in the view already. I think when I reviewed it, it came with four standard, so three in the front, one in the rear. There is space at the front, if I remember rightly, for another two 120s and also in the top for another possibly two, possibly three 120s. So I've gone with the Arctic F12 PSTs with the uh, PWM sharing technology. You don't necessarily need RGB on that top section because you're probably not gonna be able to see it particularly well. These do really well for around about eight pounds each. If you did wanna go for the RGB Game Max fans, which are included in the case, you can get those as well. They are normally around about 10 to 12 pounds each. Depending on what your use case is, I personally probably would just stick with some normal Arctic fans, the F12, are really good fans, they do work exceptionally well, keep things cool, and don't cost a fortune, which is awesome. So all in all, that total comes to 778 pounds, 56 pence. That is current prices here on the 10th of September, 2020. You could change this around quite a lot. You could save a lot of money on the motherboard and also the RAM, and maybe also get rid of the cooling fan, and then maybe go for 3,700. But again, you don't really get a lot more for your money, especially if gaming is your thing. If it's just for using emails, going on the internet, watching YouTube, playing games, you don't necessarily need a ton of cores. Six cores, 12 threads is absolutely fine. Until we know what comes out from AMD in a couple of weeks time, really, this is speculative. No one really knows for sure how well the new chips are gonna do. If they're about 25% faster and of a similar price point, it would be crazy not to go with them. Maybe if uh, Jim, if you wanna email me back, maybe put this on hold and then email me in about a month's time when things do change we'll see what the landscape looks like then and we can review it again and see if anyone else has had any other ideas or any tweaks or modifications we can do to this build to get you a little bit more bang for your buck so that pretty much wraps this one up um sorry it's been a bit of a long one and it's not really gone into a lot of detail on some of the parts because obviously jim's already got stuff but also if you uh, are in a similar situation you want to build a pc and you're not too sure what you want or you've got some parts already and you want me to create a pc part picker list so you can uh, go over it or watch it online with your friends or whatever, please do feel free to let me know. Uh, you can email me, mike at mikesunboxing.com. Also, you can join us on our Discord and you can join us and obviously make any suggestions or make any requests there. You're more than welcome to do so. We are here to help. So if you do want any advice or anything like that, please do let us know. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews now too. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.